We also need to become sensitive to God's provision. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. See, God does provide if we ask. I know there are people out there that would say, well, God knows what we need before we ask, so why bother? Well, as a father, I like it when my children ask for things because that helps to build the relationship. It helps them to think about things and to become grateful instead of just expecting things. And God wants us to be grateful people. He wants us to be thankful for all things at all times. And that happens as we count our blessings. But if we don't ask God for something, we may not be as mindful to thank him for it. And we may not see the power of God in answers to prayer. And in fact, we may leave blessings on the table where God was prepared to do something for us, but because we did not ask, he did not do it because he would not receive glory for it being done. So he encourages us, he encourages us to ask. He encourages us to seek and he encourages us to find so that we can give glory. We also should be sensitive to God's leading. Luke 13, 24 says, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. It's interesting to me that this is a future tense. This is something that, when I was young, I always thought was maybe something that happened in the past. If I uh, say my prayer of repentance, I went through the narrow gate. And yet Jesus says that we should be spending our entire lives seeking to enter that narrow gate. And I think that narrow gate is something we approach when we die. Jesus wants us to be dependent upon him. He wants us to be seeking after him and following after him, walking that narrow road, that road that leads to life. Jesus said, I am the door. Nobody can come to the Father except through me. And he who does will go in and out and find pasture. Someday we will walk through that door. Someday we will cross the Jordan River, as the Negro spirituals say. Someday we will be in the presence of our Lord. And it won't be our good works that get us into heaven. It will be our fellowship. It will be our discipleship, our following after Jesus Christ. So what can we do? How do we soften our hearts? It's nice to talk about things that we should be doing, but I'd like to give you some practical guidance regarding this. First of all, I think we need to agree with God. When God says that what we're doing is sin, when he says that we've lost our first love, we should agree with him and say, yeah, Lord, you're right. Instead of trying to make excuses, instead of trying to say, well, I'm not that bad, or to say, well, you know, I, I just need to fix it on my own. 1 John 1, 8 through 10 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And again in verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Well, we know that God is not a liar. And so if we're trying to make him out to be, we're going to get the short end of that stick. No, let God be true and every man a liar. We just need to agree with God. The next thing we need to do is ask for mercy. By doing this, we are affirming our dependence upon him. That softens our heart. That brings us to a place where we are no longer trusting in ourselves, but on God's grace. Psalm 51, 
is a, it's a beautiful psalm. It's a great psalm for those of us who are struggling with sin. It was written by King David after he had sinned with Bathsheba. I don't know if you're familiar with that story or not. I'll share it really quickly. David had pretty much won all of his battles, and uh, his, his generals were now going out to fight instead of him. So, in his leisure, he saw a woman that he really liked. And so he inquired about her, found out who she was, learned that she was, in fact, married. But that didn't stop him. He was the king, after all. He can do what he wants. So he brought her in to his castle, and there he had relations with her. She got pregnant. He tried to cover it up. He had the, uh, the, the husband come out of the fields and to, uh, to have relations with his wife. Wouldn't do it. He was too honorable a man. So David had him killed in battle. And then he went and married the man's wife. He almost got away with it, but God revealed it to a prophet. And the prophet confronted him. And David acknowledged his sin. Psalm 51 is that acknowledgement. I encourage you to read it. Make it a prayer to you, to the Lord, from your own heart. It begins in this way. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? You know, God answers prayer. If that's a prayer of your heart, you can be assured that God will answer that prayer. And that will soften your heart. And then finally, I would say, resist temptation. You don't have to keep going back and doing the same old stuff that you hate to do. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with a temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Now, that way of escape may come a whole lot sooner than you want it to, because some of us like to dabble in our sin, don't we? You know, men on the internet, we may go and we're seeing the little thumbnails and we try to ignore those. But, you know, maybe even in our ignoring them, we might give it that second or third look. No, the right place is to simply not even be on those sites. You know where they are. Just stay away. And then you can resist that temptation. If you have a trouble with any number of sins, you know, you don't go to the bar just to resist your temptation to drink. You stay away from the bar to resist it. And you don't let the alcohol into your home. Then you can resist the temptation. Just as an example. You see, God is calling us into a discipleship relationship with him. I think we have some misunderstandings about what Christianity is. Christianity is not a club Christianity is not something that you get baptized into as a baby and then get confirmed into. God has no grandchildren. He has children. And the relationship is found through adoption. And that adoption happens through Jesus Christ. We who have received the word and believe it and have repented of our sins are now his disciples. And there's no way that you can do that. You can't respond unless you soften your own heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have called us into this relationship called discipleship. Lord, we want to be good disciples. We want to follow after Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would empower us by your Holy Spirit to do this. Lord, your word says that if we know to do good, happy are we if we do it. And so, Lord, as we move forward into this week, this is one commandment that we can do. We can soften our hearts. Help us, O oh Lord, to do it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.